Hey guys, welcome to another YouTube video and I'm really excited for you to watch this one because it's with my old coach, Hugh Ma. He has coached Ryder Cup players and some of the world's best and I've come to his facility here at Rygate Hill. It's an informative video. I've learned an awful lot as well. I've really enjoyed this lesson. It was no more than 45 minutes long uh, from start to finish and I think you'll really enjoy it. So just to note, this isn't a lesson for you guys. It's an in-depth insight into my lesson. I think you'll love it. So first of all, what are we trying to achieve? Let's start at the beginning. Um, well, I not, guess for not me, played a lot recently, have you? Not played any golf. I don't okay. have any practice sessions. Um, what am I trying to achieve? Finding some sort of consistency, but also it feels like when I play my best golf, I've always had one swing thought. Okay. And you know, whatever that is, at least it allows me to kind of commit to it. So. I don't know. I guess jokes aside, I would love to tee up once next year. Okay. Um, but for me, I don't want to carelessly practice. Okay. You know, not that I get the chance to practice, but if I am hitting balls, yeah. I don't want it to be purposeless. Okay. So I want to have an understanding of where my swing's at. Mm -hmm. If I'm going to work on anything, okay. what is it? Yep. I think any player has like a swing bias or a tendency, right? Yep. So I want to identify what that is. Okay. I know roughly when I haven't played golf in such a long time, I know what my bad kind of misses are. Okay. But as you probably know, like back in the day when I used to play, I was good tee to green. Mm -hmm. And now I just feel hopeless. Like I'm standing over the ball, I've got no idea where it's going. Okay. So for me, it's just having that kind of clarity, self-awareness, and maybe just having a bit more purposeful practice okay. if I do have a What session. shot shape would you like to hit? It's funny because naturally I do draw the ball. Mm -hmm. But if I revert to when I have maybe swung it my best, especially mm -hmm. with the irons, I'd kind of fade it okay. to keep the club a little bit more in front of me. And for me, it was a feel as though the club face was kind of pointing at the target for as long as possible. Yeah. Um, but with, with the woods, you know, especially the driver, it was kind of that high draw. So it's yeah. quite contrasting. Okay. Um, what would a, you, in an ideal world, what would you want? I wouldn't mind baby fades. I just think your bad shots aren't as bad. Okay. Whereas, you know, some people, you know, Charlie Hall, for example, she only sees a draw. Yep. You know, you get some players who can only see one shape, but I think I'm better off with a fade, just knowing okay. kind of... So we're going to, everything we do is going to work towards fade. I think so. So what's your missed strike just now? Fat oh, or thin? Fat. Okay. Just heavy. And heel or toe? Both. Okay. <laughs> When you flush it and it's not online, what's it doing? <sighs> These are difficult questions to answer because I've played so little. I reckoned probably straight right or a draw, like a big draw. Okay, so overturning yeah. or push. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's just get hitting. Okay. Uh, I've got some videos earlier, so we can uh, we'll take a look at them in a minute. I've got a five iron. So that would be your overdraw. That's my wonderful pull. But shot, that's well yeah. struck, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, any injuries? No, Aches not or pains? Anymore. No. Nope. Back in the Healthy. day, I had a bad back. Mm -hmm. um, had tendonitis in my jump in my left wrist, but okay. I'm all clear now. Now I okay. never get to play. And if it does finish online, what's mm. the shot shape just now? It's, I'm probably drawing everything. Kay. Yeah, Kay. I reckon so. Okay. It's weird hitting so many balls again. Okay. So let's have a look at what's going on. Yeah. So I said I've got some videos earlier, but we're going to start by looking at the data, okay? Mm -hmm. So I would like to see your seven iron data. So we're looking in here. So basically what I'm looking for here is, number one, is there any kind of consistent pattern? Mm -hmm. Number two, where we need to explore to turn you into a fade. Okay. Um, and what it is that's preventing you from hitting fades just now. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to reference this against the video. Okay. Um, so once we've identified what we need to do to work towards that fade shot, then 
everything is going to be geared around getting there, all mm -hmm. right? So if you look at your 7 iron, I mean, there's, there's certain things in here that are good. You've naturally always had speed. You've still got speed, mm -hmm. okay? Um, my biggest issue just now is that the swing direction um, isn't far enough left okay. and fluctuates a lot. So basically, you have the club swinging basically directly at the target just now. Now, the challenge with that is that if you're trying to produce any shape, mm. you've almost got to misstrike it to create shape. Got it. So we need to turn you into a fader, which is going to require us to explore, number one, your start position, and then are there any movement patterns in there. Mm -hmm. You're consistently, I said, you're consistently quick. You're producing reasonably consistent numbers across a lot of the kind of key data points. Mm -hmm. um, just trying to find your face control here. Must be here somewhere. What's the difference between club path and mm -hmm. swing direction? So swing direction is where the is the direction the bottom of the golf swing is pointed through impact. Got it. Club path is where you strike it on that. So a path would be what I call a combination data point. Path is swing direction, swing plane, and attack angle. Yes. Swing uh, swing direction is just one data point. Got it. So I tend to look at swing direction yeah. and the others. Just now you're too neutral. Mm -hmm. I mean your average is basically zero for mm -hmm. club path. Okay. Now if you middle it with zero and square the face, you'll hit a perfectly straight shot. Yeah. Problem is, you're now asking yourself to middle it every time and square <laughs> the face every time. Yeah. So we're going to be looking to at everything that we can do to start to take that swing direction and subsequently path left a target. Mm -hmm. So these are the swings I got earlier. This is your start position. And effectively what your start position is going to do for you is it's going to allow you access to movement options and appropriate impact geometry. I'm a massive believer that if we can't set up to the ball appropriately for the shot you want to hit, then you've got no right to worry about your golf swing. Mm -hmm. And you'll be surprised at how quickly you can change a golf swing just by changing the start position. Mm -hmm. Okay, so a couple of little conflicts going on here. Mm -hmm. um, I think the ball position is reasonably good for a for a fade, but the shaft position is probably biasing more towards draw or neutral. Mm -hmm. So we're going to mess around with the start position uh, as far as the shaft's concerned to get that in more appropriate position. But pretty much everything else is lining up quite nicely for me. There's maybe some issues with with your tilts and your pelvis position, but I'm not going to look at that quite yet. I think mm -hmm. ball position's where we're going to start. Okay. And it's nice and simple. Mm. Always might, is. <laughs> it, might, it might not be that simple in the end. <laughs> and you've not got any aches or pains just now? No. Okay. So next thing, once I've looked at your uh, your start position, then I'm going to start to look at what happens basically as the club moves through impact. So in technical terms, we're looking at P6 for those golf swing geeks out there, where the shaft is parallel to the floor before impact. Mm -hmm. um, and just know that's very much a draw bias. That okay? looks super unstable to me as well. Yeah, you've got to be, it would be fine if you're trying to hit a draw, mm. but so, but. I think it's important for golfers that you identify a shot shape to work towards. Yeah. Because that then gives the structure of not just your coaching, but also your own practice um, a little bit more clarity. So just now we can see the shaft pointing way right and the rib cage pointing right. Okay. Both of which are draw bias. Yes. So we'd need to address that. Mm -hmm. um, if we look at your... Uh... That is fancy. Um, you know I do fancy. Yeah. So I'll draw, draw these lines on to get an idea of how your lead shoulder works, how your left shoulder works, because that can be quite an important um, identifier for your swing characteristics. So one thing I have noticed here is that the club is swinging quite a long way into the ground. Mm -hmm. So while your attack angle is appropriate, the depth of your divot is too deep. Yeah. Again, that would tend to be more of a draw bias characteristic than a okay. fade, char fade bias characteristic. So you can see how your left shoulder, this little dot which started in that crosshair is closer to the ground here so that's obviously taken the the low point the bottom of the swing down the way mm -hmm. and that i think is why you're getting some funny strikes off this mat so that left shoulder is going down yes that way yeah now challenge with that is that the more the left shoulder goes down the way yes. the more you have to hang on to to your wrist angles again that's working more towards draw than it is fade yeah okay there's a lot of manipulation potentially as well isn't it it's just as well you're good isn't it <laughs> But you do a pretty decent job of returning it to impact because you're a good player. Right. I like the fact that the uh, the on form app is catching your ponytail. Yeah. <laughs> That's a funny left arm, <laughs> isn't it? 
<laughs> Very good. Right. And then as we look at it through impacts, so say analyzing it from, uh, from P6 through to P8, that's definitely draw bias. So we need to do something to rectify that. I have, I've never worked with P's before. Okay. So P6 is before impact. It's shaft P8? parallel to the floor on the way down. P8 is shaft parallel to the floor Got on it. the way out. So seven is impact. Seven is impact and Got one it. is address. Yes. Okay. okay. Uh, the reason I use the P system is it's just a really simple way to reference specific points in the swing. Mm -hmm. And for me, it's an analysis tool. Because you're a good player, I would not I would probably refer to it, but the majority of players I coach, I don't. Yep. Um, but it's an analysis tool, so you can check where the club is in space at certain points of time relative to baseline. Mm -hmm. Gives you an idea of what's going on. Got it. And because the club's coming from the inside, shaft pointing right, ribcage pointing right, the club swings right far too, far too much through okay. impact. So that's what we've got to rectify. Mm -hmm. Because you're good, you do a decent job of returning everything to a, an appropriate impact position, but there's definitely little bits we can work on. Mm -hmm. So, to add some structure to it, we're going to start just by looking at ball position. Okay. So we're going to do this in order. First things first, let's get the ball position sorted out. Okay. Then we can start to address the other things. Now, what I expect to happen is that as soon as we, we'll go back to it in seven iron, as soon as we move ball position, we should see swing direction going left. So I'm going to draw some lines in the ground to help you with this. Perfect. So if you can tell me when this is pointed at the ball to target line. Okay. <coughs> ball to target line. So a little bit right. Per hair left. Yeah, perfect. Love. Perfect. So really simple practice tool for you. I'll give you your own piece of chalk so you can do this on the on mats wherever you practice. Mm -hmm. It works on grass as well. I'm just gonna draw a cross here. We're going to position the ball right on top of that cross here, okay? Okay. Back to the seven. Now, as I said, if we get this right, we should start to see the uh, the club travelling more left through impact pretty quickly. Okay. All right? So, ball right in the cross. Right in the cross here. Okay. Now, I don't want you to shift ball position, but I do want you to shift shaft position. Okay. It may be that we have to move the ball a little further forwards to help. Yeah. But I want you to go from the shaft being sat that way yeah. to basically vertical. Got it. So this line on the floor is your reference point. Yeah. Okay. So not too far ahead, bit more neutral. Bit more neutral. Okay. Neutral being vertical. And I'm not okay. bothered with ball position right now. Not just now. Okay. I flushed it, but I couldn't hold my balance. Nice balance. <laughs> I almost need to set up normally and then remind myself. Co to correct, do that. and you can move that handle back a little bit more than you think. Really? Yeah. Okay. You'll probably see it launch a little bit higher as well. That was just a poor shot, that one. That was me, not you. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just going to set up normally and then just exaggerate, really. So for me, it feels like that left wrist is. Massively cut. Stuff. Okay. Well, cup in the left wrist mm. would definitely be more of a fade characteristic in C, okay? Okay. That tends to open the face to the shaft, that does the opposite. Yes, yeah. Of course, yeah. So not only is it helping you get the swing direction more left, mm. but it's also helping you start to, to work towards the fade shape you're looking for. That's the thing, I think. You know, a lot of people, when they try and make changes and stuff, you almost don't exaggerate it enough because it feels so alien. You almost panic as well. And, and from a coaching perspective, it's important that if, if they're not getting it right, yeah. they shouldn't be praised. It's like, well, no, you, let's, let's get the freaking thing right. Yeah. Okay, shaft's good there. Yeah. Now go. Okay, so let's have a look at the data to see if that's shifted anything, all right? Okay. So what we've seen now is that your swing direction, which was the key thing we were looking to shift, has moved left okay? okay just with that change so it's plus numbers before it was basically about zero before mm -hmm. so you've taken it to an average of three point of t nearly three degrees where it was 2.6 before mm -hmm. we need to continue to shift that swing direction all right because that is where you're going to see your wins uh, another five or ten shots trying to get that towards four five to the left okay okay the good ones you've hit has been about three okay all right now i think the way to do that is let's just shift the ball a little further forwards yeah Okay, 
So, same thing with the shaft. Yeah. This time. The ball's going to go a full ball further forwards. Full ball. Good. Okay. And like again, that. you've now got a reference point where we can see that there's less space between the line and your left heel. Yeah. Good. Okay. Like the shaft there? Yep. Keep going for me. Yeah. <coughs> so this was before. Just to give you guys a bit of an indicator. That's what I'm feeling now. And I think it's important that we give you specifics. So mm. instead of moving the ball forward and then you coming back in three weeks time where it's yeah. outside your left foot, yeah. we need specifics. Yeah, to me that, because I guess I naturally flare out my left foot as which, well. Which I bit. like, yep. It's almost, I can actually visually see it. It's almost Perfect. a club length that way and almost half a club length Perfect. the heel. Good, I like that. You can visually see as opposed to visually hear. Yeah. <laughs> Now we're talking. So it will go higher because we've moved yeah. the ball forwards, okay? Yeah. And to be honest, I feel like I need all the help I can get with some height now. Okay. So same again, just do a really good job for me and see. Nice. Hmm. I must admit, just by hitting a couple of balls already, and I'm not just saying this just to Blow sunshine out my bum. Good, yeah. <laughs> but immediately, just from that setup change, it feels harder to physically draw it. I, I almost feel as though these are little ingredients yeah. to help me. Basically, putting you in appropriate setup, as I said, it helps you get better impact geometry mm. and it will give us a better chance to move properly as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, so same again. Just do a good job for me. I love that. Yeah, that's better, isn't it? I mean, that finish left a target, but. I don't know, it just felt nice. Swing direction's right. consistently where we want it. Just make sure you double check that ball position yeah. with the club, Insy. I'm finding myself check it every time now. Good. Different ball flight altogether, trajectory wise, especially. Real good. Okay. One more. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at that. Are we liking that? I mean, without really trying, but I know it was right at target. If you look at all the best players in the world, I don't know about you, but I don't really like a neutral ball flight, dead straight. It must be harder. I think it works quite well in the ladies' game. Right. Um, generally, this yeah. is not me, not me being chauvinist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because by and large, the speeds are lower. Yeah. So you do get those players who are exceptionally good at applying everything square and middling. For it. sure, yeah. But as speeds go up, mm -hmm. I think you need to see more shape. Yeah. yeah. And certainly, against your peers in the ladies' game, you're definitely quick. Yeah. You're, you're certainly not slow as far as that's concerned. I'm gonna hit one more now. That's my that was my nickname at school, one more. <laughs> okay, so if you can just come and cast your eyes on the screen on the right, please. Mm -hmm. So we're shot from exactly the same camera angle. Okay. This is where the club was. Ah. That's where it is. So we've seen a significant change. Before or after? In where the club is before and after. Yeah. Okay. Show me before again. But only. Wow. Through Shaft shifting. Further right club on my right thigh basically and after. Correct. And there's the. Wow. Two overlaid. Yeah. Okay. I did, that's without even physically trying to make those changes. So as I said, appropriate start position gives you access to appropriate movement. Now that mm -hmm. doesn't mean that you're going to choose to use it, but it's staggering how often you can shift. Love the that. golf swing just by creating more appropriate shaft, uh, mm -hmm. shaft position. Mm -hmm. So let's just carry on. Yeah. Don't stop now. Yeah. And we're seeing the swing direction moving around into something a bit more appropriate. Mm -hmm. And more importantly, it's consistent now.
Love that. It's amazing how such tiny changes can make such a big difference. So that was a nice movement, I think, but a toe strike and I just kind of okay. raised the head. That was, the, my, that was my biggest left miss. Okay. Since the changes. But it's just one out of, you know, compared to before, it was almost every single one. Okay. okay, let's have a look at this then. Those last two are a little bit out of sync, but. So you tell me, is that before or after? That is uh, before. No, that's before. Oh. There's a giveaway, there's some lines on Do the floor. Do you know floor. What? what? Yeah, I know. Do you know what? The thing that's getting me is, it feels as though that ball, I, I mean, we've moved a ball further uh, forward. Correct. It doesn't look that drastic. It's not. And with the hand position, although it feels like I've got a massive cupping on my left wrist, it looks so neutral. That versus. Now this line I draw down, I'm draw basically drawing down from the sternum. So that versus that. I think I thought this was before because it's still leaning forwards, whereas it feels to me that it's back. Yeah. So there you go. That, to me, is enough of a difference for you to play with. I mean, it doesn't even physically look that different no. to me. It's very, very small margins. Yeah. And from recollection, when we worked together years before, you were quite feel-sensitive. Yeah. One tiny, tiny little movement felt like it was yeah. a huge movement change. Mm -hmm. uh, let's have a look at how this is uh, shaping up from... I'm going to put, uh, put it on here. Okay, so we've already established that we're quite happy with the improvement in ball position and shaft position. So now I want to get an idea of how the left shoulder is moving. Mm -hmm. So that's improved Higher. as well. Higher. Yeah. yeah, definitely not into the ground as Correct. much, is it? Correct, so that's improved as well. Mm -hmm. So very simply through organizing your start position better. And I think if you, if you choose, my experience is if you choose the right component, Mm. and get it right, mm. you generally get two or three changes for free, which you've seen. Yeah. The club's already in much better shape coming in, mm. and the left shoulder's working better. Much better. See, I think that is lined up pretty much perfectly from front on for a fade. Mm. This is classic me. This is why I make golf so hard for myself. So well, golf is hard. Before we did any of this, yeah. my eyes straight away revert to the lower body, mm -hmm. and I just think it looks so jigged jagged mm -hmm. where it looks super unstable i would never have thought about looking at my left shoulder you know set up changes yep. i mean is it even worth looking at or are these changes that we're talking about right now enough to not you know is it almost a greater priority to the point it will make better changes versus focusing on the lower well body? that i mean that's basically the nature of golf coaching right mm. my heavy bias is that i want to find the smallest change that gets the biggest result and i think in this instance we've probably done that mm. But it doesn't mean that's where it ends, mm -hmm. because I can look at any golf swing, and while I can see an awful lot of things I like, I can mm -hmm. also see an awful lot of things I'd like to tidy up. Mm. But you've got to be, t particularly for serious golfers, you've got to be tidying them up relevant to better play rather than sure. just to look sexier. Yeah. And without doubt, there's plenty of stuff that, we would, that I would look to do, mm. but how we choose to time that mm. is down to how much you practice, how much yeah. you play, um, how much progress you're making with mm. this. Now, in some lessons, I would just have said, right, that's all you're going to do. Yeah. Get that right. Get good at that. Mm -hmm. Because we've seen an improvement in ball flight. The data's improved. We've got the club moving into a much more appropriate place. Mm -hmm. You're hitting better shots. You're starting to relate to feels better. Mm -hmm. So I think this, this is where it can become difficult as a coach because instinctively you want more. Mm -hmm. And... I'm instinctively trying to give you as little as I can yeah. get away with. Uh, there's definitely stuff that I would look to do, and I'll, I'm going to share it with you for the purposes of this. Mm. But typically, I wouldn't share it with the player because I know they're going to go and try and do it, and then they probably neglect what I see as the priority sure. and say, yeah. "We've got all I've the evidence that. we need." Yeah, 
Noted. We have all the evidence here to suggest that, that those two small changes, ball a little up, shaft a little back, mm -hmm. made a huge difference. Mm -hmm. Ball flight data, you can see you're moving very differently without trying to move differently. Mm -hmm. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a couple of constraints to help you, okay. so some practice drills to help you, rather than explain in more detail where I would like to take this, okay. because I know what you're like. Oh, because I'm, I'm going to have to come back to you. Well, it's part of the business <laughs> part model. Part two. Yeah. It's part of the business model. So we're going to go with, uh, with a VJ Singh, Singh drill. Okay. And a Soren Kelson drill. Okay. I'm just going to stop pulling that bad boy. Perfect. Now, the beauty of constraint is that if I put this in place for you, mm -hmm. it's pushing you towards better club behavior and you can keep your focus on the thing that we know matters right now. Okay. Ball position and handle position. So it's real high tech stuff this. <laughs> you can use an aim stick. Yeah. But basically that's your practice station. Okay. Okay. And as you get better and better at it, we can potentially move this in a little bit. Mm -hmm. But they're there just purely to get you a sense of exiting more left, so pushing that swing direction that we talked about. Okay. Okay? Co-op. All your focus, co-op, yes. <laughs> Water champions. Yeah, lovely. Um, <laughs> ball position, handle position are your sole focus. Yep. And then in the swing itself, your job is to start the ball left of the bottom. So you get a lot of players, you know, during a lesson, they might be given a drill, but you said this is a constraint drill. So what you're Correct. doing is... I'm putting you in a position... Yeah which is forcing you to move or encouraging you to move yeah. in a slightly more appropriate manner. Got it. Are all your drills constraint drills? Or? No, not at all. Got it. Um, it. Depends very much on the player. Yeah. My preference would always be to go with some kind of drill that doesn't require thought almost. Mm -hmm. So rather than saying, right, NC, I need you to do this, 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 and this. Yeah. Just saying, miss the freaking bottle, yeah. okay? That's all I'm asking yeah. you to do. Yeah, okay. I've got my visual reference points. Let me so check. your emphasis is solely on start position. Yep. And then miss the bottle. Correct. Okay. Felt a bit nervous then. Well, it's not particularly tight parameters, but no, it's not. <laughs> not at all. I like this chalk line a lot. It definitely helps with a clear and consistent guideline with that ball position and this shaft as well. So there you go. That's flush, isn't it? That's my present to you. Thank you so much. Wow. This is the greatest gift I've ever received. You are the gift that keeps on giving. I am, aren't I? <laughs> Thank you. I'm sure my local driving range will love me. Yeah, well, it's all right. It washes off pretty quick. <laughs> that again. Now you might mm -hmm. hit some pull shots, okay? Yeah. Because the club is swinging more left. Left. I'm fine with that. Yeah. I don't want you pushing it just now. Yeah. It's almost that's your. Um, it, it just can't be possible to miss this right, basically. Correct, yeah. correct. Unless I massively fade it, which is highly unlikely. Which is highly unlikely, yeah. certainly at this stage. Now, if, yeah. you job, if your job is to, to hit flush pull shots for me, yeah. then we can slowly work towards letting that turn back. Clough but if you winner. throw the occasional push in there, you've still got too many variables at yeah. the bottom. Got okay. It. Simple. Love that. That is a fade. That is a fade. That's our we first got there. proper fade. That's a fade. That is a fade. I love that. I just love how simple that is. It just makes so much sense. And thing is, it's not like what you've told me is a bit of a surprise. I, I understand there are ingredients to help you with X, Y, and Z. It is quite basic, no offence. <laughs> no, but I think that the key is that Tommy Armour used to say this, that, that becoming a great golf instructor is about 
understanding a topic in its complexity to be able to communicate it in its maximum simplicity. Mm. And I think golf coaches can misinterpret that by trying to make everything simple, 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 but it can't yeah. be too simple. Yeah. And the simple advice must change the impact in ball flight. Mm -hmm. If it's not changing the ball flight, it's just noise, mm -hmm. not, not coaching. Mm. Uh, and the beauty of this is, what have we hit here, 25 balls? Mm -hmm. It changed like that. Mm -hmm. So simple advice is fine, but it's got to work. Mm. And if you want, I can talk through you and talk you through it in <laughs> immense complexity. Mm. But I'm not sure that's going to help you. Mm. I also feel like there's an element of going out on the golf course next time yeah. and having a level of acceptance yeah. and also acknowledging little wins. So if I was to miss the green 10 yards straight left, yeah. I wouldn't be you know, too disheartened by it. I wouldn't no. beat myself up over it. However, if I miss it 10 yards right, I might be a bit bogged down. Here's a question for you. Hmm. Could you take that to the golf course? Yes. Okay. Like, Done. Absolutely. Done. Yeah. So I've given you a drill to help develop the feel of where the club should be. Mm -hmm. And I've given you a start position that allows you to do that. Do you know what? Done. I've actually got a broken broom at home. Good. So <laughs> I'm sorted. I've got my chalk and broom. You've got chalk and broom. Happy All days. the training aids you ever need. I just need to get myself an orange juice. <laughs> I think it's pineapple. Is it? it does make a difference. Wow. Okay. Orange juice is, fade by is draw bias and pineapples fade. <laughs> that was delayed hearing, that was. Yeah. <laughs> You're too into the task. So that I'm fine with, because yeah. it struck as well. Yeah. Yes, it's a little pull, but it's struck. Okay. We'll start seeing some lemonades now. So you should have put a lemonade bottle down. Brilliant. Lemonade fades. I see what you've the done days. there. I see what you've done there. That's good for me, that was. Love that. It sounds different. I know they're going yep. quite a long way left now, but I'm definitely committing to it, yep. which is task one. Shifting the swing to the left, mm -hmm. task two. Good. And then getting those fades is task three. Just double check your ball position with the club. Yep. No, I'm happy with happy? that. Happy? Yeah. Good. Like that. Now, as I said, there is other things that I would like to explore. Mm. But I think we've got to get you comfortable with seeing certain ball flights. Yes. We've got to get you comfortable with, I mean, basically that start position has to become second nature habit. Uh, and then we can start to layer on the next, if you like, the next improvement or the next refinement. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's the one, isn't it? Love that, Enzi. Mm. Got a nice little visual in the kind of distance of that smaller white pole. Yep. Maybe, you know, that being the starting line. Yep. But the wind is pretty much into, I guess. It's not really off the right. Can I make this a little bit more constrained? Mm hmm. Just the hair? I wouldn't do it with the stick, I'd do not it with, with the, the bottle. Yeah. So I think that was. There you go. So we can shift the bottle. Closer Let's go half an inch. Yes. So a little bit closer, so it's closer to our and follow gonna, through. And you're going to nail inside. the bottle, yeah. smell a pineapple for the rest of the day. <laughs> that would be awful. It's definitely club face now. Yep. And the beauty of constraint drills are you can start at sort of level one. Yeah. And gradually make them a little bit more challenging. Yeah. And then you'll find that break point. Mm -hmm. Then you go back to the beginning, start again. Ball position's good, just check the handle stays back. Yeah. <coughs> that's the one. Yep, we love. That's, that's tour standard. That is the creme de la creme of golf shots, that. It's hard to be humble, isn't it? Mm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love that shot. It's nice. I think that's what I wasn't very good at. I, I guess now, you know, things don't really matter. I'm not competing for a living. But as a professional golfer or elite amateur, I think a lot of us are, like, just being so hard on yourself. Well, it, but the whole culture is that 
nothing's ever good enough. Golf's not perfect. And it is an imperfect sport by nature. And I think we, we strive for perfection. That's the problem, isn't Correct. it? If yeah. you can accept that you're never going to achieve it mm. and strive for it, it's Every maybe not a bad time. mindset. And I think that was the biggest obstacle for me because I was striving for perfection. I, I was expecting perfection, which is stupid. I feel ridiculous saying that out loud. But remember, you were 10 years younger. It's not, yeah. you're, a diff you're a different human being fundamentally. Yeah, but I guess now, you know, we fast forwarded 10 years. It's nice to be able to reflect on that because people yeah. ask me often, if you were to do anything differently, what would that be? And I would play a lot more golf out on the golf course, yeah. first of all. And I'd probably be a little kinder a to yourself. <laughs> Not the best right, strike, trick. but it's, We're done. it's done, yeah. That was ace. <laughs> Do you know what, Hugh? I absolutely love that. It was so simple. It was clear. Mm -hmm. It was actually easy to do, mm -hmm. which I really like. Mm -hmm. And the best thing about it is we've got evidence to prove it, whether it's in the data, yeah. the ball flight. Mm -hmm. What um, we're seeing on video. Yeah, everything matches really nicely. So. Yeah. And I think the only thing much. that you can screw up here is not being disciplined about how you practice. Yeah, and I don't know, I don't even know, I mean, time flew by. I don't know how long it 45 took. minutes. That was easy peasy. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for that lesson. Nice job. Nailed this it. is Hugh Meyer, everyone, just to let you know, this is my old coach. Uh, really Old in what it. sense? Just I'm only 50. In Come many on. ways. <laughs> <laughs> so make sure you check out his social handle. It's right here. And we're going to have a little chat about what you're doing next. Excellent. We'll see you there. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe and comment down below.